Okay, so today I'll be showing you how to make a multi-page website. Uh, you'll be making a couple of, well, we'll make one page. And then if you want later on, you can make another page and add it to the multi-page, the website. So first I'm going to have to go over the like cores of what coding is and like what each language means. Uh, I'm going to start with HTML. It's the structure and the content of your website. So for example, if you had a paragraph on uh, maybe some sort of animal, you, that paragraph would be in your HTML. It uses tags. So what that means is if you want to write something, you have to put it in between two like pieces of text, which I'll show you later. CSS are the decorations. Uh, they basically let you change the font, make the text different sizes. Uh, you can do a lot of cool stuff with CSS. It also helps you to align stuff. If you want everything to be in the middle, you can do that with CSS. So JavaScript is like the brains. It does calculations for you. The user can't see it unless they go into the source code. And you can do things like make a calculator with it. So right now, we, we're going to make a website using BSD. Uh, the theme can, can be anything. It can be one of your hobbies or interests, like a TV show or a game. And let's just go into BSD. So to get into BSD, you just have to open your browser and open this link. So you just copy and paste that link into your browser. Into here and you'll be able to log in. I'll give you a few minute, a couple minutes to try and log in. So what, when you're trying to log in, you want to either put in your if you already have an account, you just put in your email in here and your password. But if you don't have an account, you can go to sign up. And then you can either sign in with Google or put in your own email address or your mom's email address. And then put in any password you want as long as you remember it. And just click sign up. But I already have an account, so I'll just log in here. You can use any email you want as long as it's something that you have access to. So you have to be able to log into it. If you're stuck on trying to register with your, like, into BSD, uh, I have a link that should, oh, no, oops, hang on, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a bit. I prepared a video so that if you guys are having trouble trying to log in, you guys can just watch the video and figure it out while I explain to the other people who already logged in.
Oh, whatever, I can't find it. Is everyone already in? Chat keeps disappearing. Okay, so once you're in BSD, what you can do is, well, first I'll show you what I did last time we had one of these sessions. Um, I made a website, which is pretty simple, just about a jellyfish. You can do it on anything you want. It doesn't have to be an animal, but I'm going to do an animal again. So once you're on this page, you can press create sandbox here. And once you're here, you can just press HTML, CSS, JavaScript sandbox. Once you're in, um, first, actually, I'm gonna delete this and replace it with a heading tag. So these heading tags, well, they help you remember that it's a heading, but also they already set it to bigger font sizes than normal. So if I were to write, uh, hello, in this using h1 a h1 tag which just means he the biggest heading size it comes out like this now i'm going to just copy and paste that over h2 tag and it'll be a little bit smaller so each tag it's just a sm like a few letters or numbers inside of two of those crocodile brackets thing. And then on the other side will be the same thing, but with a slash in front of the letters. Always remember to put the slash in front of your letters when you're trying to close the tag or else it'll mess up and it'll like, it'll, it won't work properly. So I'm gonna rename my heading to the strawberry poison art. You can do yours about anything, but I'm just doing mine about a frog. So once I press this run code button, it'll run the code and it'll update it. So now it shows the strawberry poison dart frog. And if you wanna save, you should probably start saving it. So you just press this button. First, give it a title. And then you just press save. Now you see, you'll see that it's green and that means we've saved it without making any changes to it. So if we were to close it now, it'd be saved on our BSD account. So next I'm gonna have another heading tag, H2. This means that the font will be smaller than the H1 tag up here. And it will have, um, I'll put description of the animal. I'll give you like 30 seconds to try and catch up. Okay, so now when I press run code, 
it's going to show my description because I didn't press it until just now. And I'm going to make another tag. It's going to have a P. And this is just like your paragraph. It's like your generic tag for putting text inside. So I'm going to go to Wikipedia. Uh, strawberry, poison dart frog, Wikipedia. And I'm going to copy and paste this. You can, you can type it in later if you want, but I'm, we don't have that much time, so I'll just copy and paste from Wikipedia. Okay. So first I'm going to... I'm going to finish up with my HTML first, then I'll move into CSS to try and make it nicer later. But first I'm going to get all the information in. Now I'm going to make another H2 tag and this is going to be on Let's see. I'll make it on the diet of the frog. So I'll just put diet. Oh, don't forget the slash. And then just make another P tag. If you're halfway typing something, BSD is kind of helpful because it pops up with one of these pop-ups and you can just click or press enter and it'll fill out the code for you. And once you've got that, I'm going to go back and copy the first paragraph of the diet. You don't have to make this about the frog. You can make it about anything you want. Just, just do it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to press run code. And yeah, it shows up. Does anyone have any questions like up till here? Okay, so now I'm gonna add a photo in between these two paragraphs of the frog. So I'll just go into Google Oops. and I'll open, I'll search strawberry poison dark frog, just that. And I'll go into images and I'll take this one. So once you find your image that you want, what you have to do is you have to right click it on Google and then click copy image address. Don't, don't click copy link address because that usually gives you something that you don't want. So I press copy image address, go over to here. And now I'm ready to make my image. So for the image, what you have to do is you have to use an, a special tag, IMG. And see, it pops up for me right here. And I can just click it and I'll copy and I'll paste the link that we got just now into SRC. So here. Once I press run code, it'll show the image, even though it's a little bit off, it's too big for the page. We can change that later with CSS.
Okay, now I'm gonna go into YouTube and actually I'll just, yeah, YouTube, uh, strawberry. I'm gonna get a video about this poison of the frog and I'm gonna put it into the website so that we can watch the YouTube video in the website. So I'll get, I'll get this one. And once you're on the video that you want, what you have to do is click share at the bottom here. You just press share and you press embed over here. Should be the first thing. Once you do that, you can, it'll give you this tag for HTML and you can use that to display it in your sandbox. So I'm just gonna click copy over here, go back to the sandbox and paste it here. So now once I press run code again, it'll show the video over here. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Okay, I'll show you again. So what you have to do when you're at the YouTube video, you press share at, over here and you click embed. And then it'll show you this, which you can then copy. For the picture, what you have to do is, I'll show you, um, you type in the opening tag, IMG, and it'll give you this piece of code where you just click there. And then you copy, once you have the image address, you can copy and paste it in between these two quotation marks. And I'll give you the photo. So now that we have most of the content done, oh wait, there's one more thing. I'm gonna make uh, another one of these P tags and inside of it, I'm gonna put click here for more information. And I'm gonna make this like, I'm gonna just run this code so we can see. I'm gonna make here, only here, link to this Wikipedia page. So the way I'll do that is I'll copy the URL from the Wikipedia page, go back to my sandbox, and then what you wanna do is put an A tag around here only here if if you want the whole thing to link to your another website with more information on stuff you can put you can put a around the whole thing 
but I only want here to be a tag. So now I'm going to press href equals and then put some quotation marks. And inside of these quotation marks, you put the link to the page that you want to redirect them to. So I'm going to paste in the Wikipedia URL over here and run the code. And now when I click on here, it'll bring me to the Wikipedia page. So now after we have all of our content done, we can go into CSS and trying to make this look nicer. Okay, first I'm gonna type in body and this will affect our entire page since everything over here is inside of the body tag over here. So I'm going to make the background color a different color. You can make the color anything you want, but I'm going to go with hmm, dark green. I'll just go with good, dark green. Okay, now the text you can't really read very well. So I'm going to change that to, I'm going to change H1 to, uh, let's see, what nice colors are there? So you just put color here and you can choose any color. I guess that's okay. So for H2, um, you can type in color and then choose anything you like. Uh, I'm going to choose cyan. And then it'll come up as that. So there are two ways to assign different colors to your text or anything in general. You can either use a name of a color, like over here. If I were to change this to purple and run the code again, it'll change to purple. But I want the other color, so let me undo that. And the other way is by using this RGB thing. So with this, you can put in any values you want. So if I were to change this to zero, it'll change from cyan to blue. And a website that you can use to find one of any color you want is just search up Google color picker. picker. And once you go in, you'll be able to choose any color you want from here. So you can slide this around and just find the color that you want. Once you found the color that you want, you just copy this and then you can put it into here instead. So just now I'll add a purple. So once I put that in here, it'll change the color to purple.
for the link that you connect different websites together, you have to put in between, so surrounding the text that you want to link them to the page, you put this, you put the, these A tags around it and then put href equals and then quotation marks, which will have the URL of the link that you want to send them to. So my one, oops, my one sends them to Wikipedia. And now I'm going to add a color for all my other text. So P uh, I'll make this red. Right now the text looks kind of weird because we're using, we're not using a nice font. We're just using the basic font. So what we can do is we can actually search up uh, Google fonts and this will let us put in any font we want into our website. So for example, I want Lato. You can check, choose any of them. I just like Lato because it's nice. And I'm going to take, I'm going to click select this style over here. And then I'm also going to click add more styles because I want another one. Oh, never mind. Wait. No, I'm just going to. Okay, once you've clicked select this style, what you can do is go over to embed. And this will let you put this into your HTML so that you'll be able to use this font on your website. So I'm just going to copy that and then go back to here. I'm going to unlock the code. Hang on. Just click at the bottom this lock and it'll ask you to unlock it. And next to here, I'm going to put, I'm going to paste the uh, text I got from over here. So you just paste that into this head tag. Now, when we go back into CSS, we can copy this line of text into CSS. For example, I want my P tag to have this font family and run the code and it'll have that font. I'm going to add that to actually. And then for example, now maybe I want to make my paragraph text a different style. So I'm going to go back to Google fonts, click browse fonts and I'll take this one, Chelsea market. You can choose any font you want. It doesn't have to be this, but it's your own personal, personal preference, but I'm just going to take this. So you just click select this style, go back over here and then Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, you can do both of them. I'm going to click embed. I'm going to copy this link and put it in my HTML just like the other one. Uh, to get that over, I'm going to take this text that was underneath the link text. This is for the CSS and this is for the HTML. So you bring this back over, go back into CSS and I want to make, so I'll just delete that and put in the new new text, paste it in. 
And now when I run this, it should, yeah, it comes up with the new font. For the Google color picker, what you, what you have to do, let me just get it. Google color picker. You go in there and then the bit that you copy would be this section to the left. You can copy either this one or this one. Both of them don't matter. I, they're just different ways of expressing the same color. So yeah, the values here will change if I change, move this around. I'll give you a minute to find the font that you want. After you unlock the HTML, you put the links in here, in between these head tags. So in between here, I have mine over inside. Okay, so next I'm going to try and make this image a bit smaller because it's too big for the screen. So what I'm gonna do is, you see how the image, it ha uses this image tag? We have to use that in the CSS to sh make, let the computer know which, like which tag we wanna change. So we'll put in IMG and then open that up and I'll put in width 100%. Now what this will do is make it as wide as our screen. So right now it's like overflowing, but if we want to, if we put width 100% here, when we run the code, it'll make it so that it doesn't leak out onto the end of the page. Yeah, in between the head tags, so over, over back here. So now I want to make the diet section aligned to the right. So I'll have diet over here and all of the text aligned with this right side of the page. So the way I'll do that is I'm going to go back into the HTML and over here where there's diet and for these two ones inside of the tags over here, I'll put in ID equals equals uh, diet. Make sure you put ID equals diet or else the computer won't know once you put the rules for it in the CSS page, what to, which thing to change. It won't change anything if you don't put the, set the ID to diet or you can set the ID to anything. It doesn't have to be diet, but it's for me, since it's only regarding this paragraph, it's easier for me. So for IDs, when you're putting them in the CSS, what you have to do, you have to put a hashtag before it because it's an ID. So I'll put diet here and I'll put uh, text align right. Yeah, and then I'll also set width 70%. Oh, not that. 
Oh, I think I. Wait, hang on. Let me check. Oh, that's not right. Ah, whatever. I'm not gonna bother with that. It's fine. So text align right will make it not like that. It'll make it like this. So just to make it look cool, you can do anything. You can even center everything, which I did with the jellyfish. But this one, I want to do this for fun. If you have any questions, just put them in the, the chat box and then I'll answer them. Or at least try my best to. Okay, so now you see that the video isn't centered. The video and this text at the bottom. So in order to center the video, I can't just put in iframe and uh, a like text align, right? It doesn't, when I try and do that, it doesn't work. So I can't center it either. It doesn't work. So what you're going to have to do if you want to move the position of this iframe, which is what we call like this embedded YouTube video, you have to go back into the HTML and surround it with a div. So I'm just covering, make sure the iframe's inside so that it moves it properly. And inside of this div, I'm going to give it the ID of uh, iframe wrapper. What a div is, it's like an invisible box that lets you e easily like align stuff, I guess. So if I run that, nothing will happen because I haven't added the CSS to interact with the ID. So I'm going to copy that, go into the CSS page and put hashtag iframe raptor. And this is going to let me edit how it looks and behaves on the page. So I'm going to put a uh, float. Wait, no, that's not right text align center. Once I run the code again, you'll see that it's centered. So that's an easy way to be able to move around the iframe. So if you want it the left, right, center, you can put it anywhere. For the hashtag, it has, you have to put, you can put any, you can put any ID here, but I'm putting iframe wrapper to know that this div is wrapping the iframe because it's the iframes inside of it. And I'm just putting in CSS hashtag and then the ID of the iframe, the div surrounding the iframe. And this lets me move the, the actual YouTube video. Yeah, it's just, okay. Around the iframe, we put a div tag to surround the iframe so that we can move the iframe in CSS. You have to put an ID over here and that ID will tell the CSS what part of the page to change. So in our case, we have ID frame, iframe wrapper. And if we go into CSS, we can, put this in and this will interact with the div. No, the hashtag means like the computer, it, it just, the hashtag, the only difference between these and these is that these are actual tags that are 
predetermined, whereas this will affect any image. But if we put ID diet on an image, for example, it'll have width 100, but it'll also text the line right. So this lets us change, like, change specific elements in the H in the web page. Does that make sense? So now you can see, click here for more information. It's kind of on to the left. I'm going to go ahead and quickly center that by putting over here uh, in the piece. I'm going to put an ID equals uh, click uh, with quotation marks around it. And I'm going to put hashtag click and then uh, text align center. And now that if I run my code, we'll be able to see that it's centered. The hashtag just shows it's the hashtag lets us change the ID specifically. So it's not actually a tag. It's an ID to one tag. So you can change just one tag if, or maybe a few with, by putting this ID here. The ID just lets the computer know like which elements, the elements with the ID will be changed by this piece of tech, this piece of CSS. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm going to start working on the index of your page, which will be like kind of the home page, which will let you go to different pages on the website. So I'm going to, first off at the bottom of the page, I'll just put P, um, slash P and then index, actually not P, A. And I'm going to put an empty href. This will let me later on when I want to link it to the index page, I can do that. So I'm going to run the code, just make sure it's not broken. Hang on, let me. Uh, okay, if you don't want to add an ID to something and you're only changing one or two things about one individual tag, one way you can do it is by putting it directly in the tag. So, for example, I want this to be centered. So I'll put text dash align equals center. And now, oh, it didn't work. You know what? I'll just make another ID. I, I don't know why it's not working. Or maybe it's not working because I didn't. Equals center. Oh. Oh, it's not centering. Ah, whatever. I'll just I'll just give in an ID. Uh, I'm just gonna use the click ID because I don't want to make another ID 
in the CSS thing just to center it. Now it should work. Nope. I'll put it inside of a P tag because I'll probably fix it. And then give the click ID in the P tag. Ah, okay, now it works. So you can't you can't use text align on this A tag. So now that I have this index button done, it doesn't go anywhere yet. So I'm gonna go to back to my home page. I'll just click in, on this logo. And I'm gonna make another sandbox. And this sandbox will have, it'll be our index page. So actually, I'll just put H1. Since this is a new sandbox, it won't show like the CSS, there's no CSS here. So it won't show if we put H1, it won't show the thing as one, a different color. It'll just be standard. So I'm going index. And yeah, it's just standard. It has none of the fonts that we put earlier. It's just going to let us link all of our pages together. So slash A, and we'll put href equals, and uh, put strawberry poison dart frog. And, oh, hang on. Okay, so now that I've made my index, I'm gonna save it again. Save. And then I'm gonna click this share button over here. Once you click it, it'll come up with share link deactivated. So you just have to click this button and now your web page, the web page that you're sharing will be in a link. So, what I'm gonna do is copy this. And for example, if I were to paste it in a new page, I would have the web page pop up. And right now it's not linking to anything yet, but I'll link it to the other page later in a bit. So copy that, go back here. I'm gonna find the poison dart frog. And at the bottom of the page, I'm going to put in between these two quotation marks, I'm going to put, hang on, typo. I'm going to put the link that was over in the other page. And I'm also going to share this page and copy the link. So for example, if I were to open that link, it'll come up with the web page. And after I click run code, when I click here, no, not there. When I click an index, it'll bring me to the index, which isn't linked yet, but I'll do that right now. Go back into index. Now in between the quotation marks, put this link. And now it should, once we run the code, when, once we click that, it'll bring us to here, and then we can get back to the index, clicking here, and we can just go back and forth. So what you can do now is if you have another web page similar to this one, you can copy and paste that. I'm gonna put the immortal jellyfish here. And I'll delete that first. I'll save it quickly. Go back. I'll find the my old one, which was this jellyfish. I'm going to change the bottom of it so we can 
a slash a href equals and then put the quotation marks oh oops hang on let me I'm gonna make another tab so that's easier to go back and forth and click I'm gonna open one on each page so I don't have to keep opening and going back and forth now I can just have both of them here so at the bottom I'm gonna also copy the share link of here and when I come here I'm gonna put the share link in the href the quotation marks it's a lot of back and forth, but it'll be worth it. Copy, paste. So now, once I click on, uh, oops, index. Once I click on index here, it'll bring me to the index. Hang on, let me, just gotta see. Oh, oops. Uh, okay, so now my it's all in one line. All both of my links are in one line, but I don't want that. I want a space in between. So what I'll do is put a tag br. You don't have to close this tag. You can just leave it like that, and I'll put a space in between. If I were to add more of these br tags, it would add more spaces. So I'll just leave it like that. And now if I click here, it'll bring me to the jellyfish page, click index, it'll bring me back to the index. And I can go back and forth between each of the web pages through the index. Um, if you have any questions, you can just put it in the chat box and then I'll try and answer those. So Dominic, is it, uh, that's all for today? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Can you stop share your screen? Thank okay. you. Okay. So guys, uh, I think Dominic has ended his session and there are something I need to explain, uh, to you all. So because this is the second time uh, the Dominic teach how to build a multi-page website because last time he teach how to build a simple website. That means if you join this session for first time, so if you are the first timer, I think uh, maybe a lot of things you don't understand. Uh, this is because that 80% uh, of the, uh, the coding things uh, we had teach uh, we had taught last session okay during the last session so if you don't understand uh, i think this is a normal one so uh but never mind because uh normally learn coding need you know need a lot of time so one hour we cannot learn uh, we cannot learn all but we need to thank you dominic uh because he showed us you know how to build a simple web uh no it's a multi-page website Okay, in this one hour. Uh, so if if you have any question, you can just leave a comment below. And also, we will send you the recorded link so that you can watch again. Okay, so for those uh, who want to, uh, you know, if you are first timer and you want to join again for the simple website, how to build simple website uh, workshop, we will send you an email link so that you can join us next Wednesday, okay? And I will be the teacher to teach you how to build a simple website, okay? So for uh, next Wednesday, we will send you the link in the email, okay? So if you think that uh, Dominic, you know, uh, Dominic explanation is good and you learn something, so please just, you know, say thank you to him. So uh, before we end this session, okay?
All right. So everyone, yeah, you already show your thank you to this uh, 16-year-old student, right? So Dominic is just 16 year old. So he can be your uh, you know, idol in learning coding. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you all. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.